It's one. Um, I guess as as a guy, you know, front line is one of the buzzwords during all this. You're on the front lines. You're you're playing in this. You're going to be doing that close contact, especially being on the on the D line and everything. Um, what are the emotions like going into a season doing this practice, bumping up against people where, you know, watching anybody interact closely is a weird thing to see nowadays. And football is, is one of those, what's it like being in there? Or is there fear? Is there worry? Does it just feel good and comfortable and normal? What's, what's it like playing football right now? Um, I would say it's a little bit different, you know, I guess the precautions that we have to take, when everyone has to wear a face shield, face mask, and everyone having to wear a mask when your helmet's not on, it's a little bit different. And it was an adjustment at first, but I feel like everybody, it's kind of like the norm to us now. And we know that we need to do this to play and we need to do this to make sure everyone's safe. And it's not really that big of an issue. And I think moving forward that, you know, we might have to play games like that with, you know, something over our mouths through our helmets. So I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. I kind I, I think we just kind of like normalized it and everything's good with us now, there, but there's no fear. There's people aren't worried about having, uh, getting COVID or having something over our mouths. We're all, we're all good. And we just push it forward. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey TQ, now that you've had, uh, you know, quite a few practices in this new system. How is it for you guys up front tra making this transition to the four-man front? And, uh, what differences have you noticed being in this new scheme? Um, honestly, playing in this new scheme is something that we all really were excited for, uh, going down to the four-man front. And I'm just I'm excited for uh, my teammates and all, as well as myself. We get to, I guess, play on more edges, and I feel like we get to play more freely, and I feel like we're really going to get to have the opportunity to, you know, rest the pass for more, get more penetration through the line, and, you know, make more plays. Danny, what do you have? Hey, TQ. Um, you came in a few years ago as part of that first transition class um, that Tom signed, and for the most part, that 2017 class has stayed together. Now that you're a senior and I guess heading into your last year, what do you think you guys have been able to accomplish as part of that as part of that transition class and kind of setting the tone and the foundation of you know the Tom Herman team in Texas? Um, I felt like I felt like when we first came in here, we were trying to establish a culture, and now that we've been here for you know almost four years now, I feel like it's been a and Every, even the freshmen that came in, they watched us. They seen how we practice. They seen how we work out and how we act around the building. I felt like as a 2017 class, we came in here and we've helped establish the culture. And throughout, you know, all these years of these different classes rolling in. And I feel like something, something we look forward to accomplishing is finally, you know, making that extra step and, you know, putting Texas back on top, that's something that we've always talked about since, you know, being, you know, recruited all together. And so, I don't know, we're, we're not done until we play our final season. Dennis, go ahead. Daquan, how about you personally, between the new scheme, a new coordinator, you being a senior, do you feel like you're poised for just a massive senior season individually? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this upcoming season. Uh, but what I'm mainly focused on is, of course, you know, get defense down and as well, you know, getting, getting comfortable and I guess, I guess building our team back together because we were like separated for so long for like about three or four months. So I feel like going forward, I'm really excited for our team. I'm really excited for the defense that we're trying to build together. And I don't know, I feel like all those personal, you know, accolades are going to come with, you know, winning games and, you know, being a great defense. Chip, go ahead. 
Um, TQ, what uh, it sounds like the defensive line had a good first scrimmage. So um, how, how good can this defensive line be? And is it championship caliber? And then what stands out about uh, Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton? Okay, man, let's start off with Alfred Collins and Vern. Um, those guys, man, I love those guys. I'm excited about those young guys. And the first thing I was saying is he's a huge dude. Big, strong, explosive already coming in. And Vernon is a very twitchy guy off the edge. And I'm really excited for what they can learn coming into this system and what they can do coming into a four-man front. So I feel like, man, they, they have no ceiling when it comes to how good they can be. They just, you know, throughout, like, you know, they got to develop and they got to get to work and they got to do the things they need to do. But as far as um, how deadly the defensive line can be and if we can be at a championship caliber, I feel like the sky's the limit for us. Um, but for, for us to get to that right now, we're, we're going through our practices, we're going through walkthroughs, we're doing all the things to take the steps to get there. But all I gotta say, you gotta watch and see how we work. Maya, go ahead. Maya, did you have a question? Steven, go ahead. Oh, Marcus, I'm sorry. Um, so we've talked about the, the new system. Um, has there anything specific that um, has been made more difficult um, about learning a new system um, in regards to the changes that y'all have had to make with um, coronavirus safety, whether it was like missing the spring or anything that um, has changed uh, with what y'all are doing right now? Are there any difficulties with, uh, with learning that system? Um, I wouldn't say there are any difficulties learning the system, but I do feel like since we missed the spring, I feel like, you know, like we're, we're installing things, we're learning things, we're learning the system. And I feel like uh, just like everybody else in the country, we missed the whole spring football, like, you know, like session, like we didn't, we didn't get to install the defense in the spring. Now we're installing it in the summer. So um all I can say is that we might feel a little bit behind when it comes to, you know, learning defense, but I don't know. I feel like everyone's picking it up pretty fast and we're going to be pretty good. Greg, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, TQ, uh, you, you talked about uh, Alfred and, and Vernon and how excited it was going to be to see these guys learn and, and, and pick up the system and all that kind of thing. Do you also now as a senior kind of, see yourself in that, not only just a team leader type thing, but also technically in helping those guys, even with a new system coming in, helping those younger guys make the transition and adapt to what's expected of them? Um, yes, uh, any, any piece of information that they ask me or that I can give them, I give it to them all the time. And I feel like what Poon, uh, what Poon did for me or Chanel did for me or Charles did for me, that's – that's what I'm trying to do to these young guys. Just hand them out information that I picked up along the years from different people or from different coaches. So yeah, I do see myself as, you know, a leader amongst like the other leaders on the team. And I feel like being part of a leader is of course being a teacher as well and just helping them along this process and making it easier for them is pretty important. Jeff, you're up. Yeah, Taquan, I know you've got uh, four new, you know, you got a new coordinator, but you got, you know, four total new assistant coaches on, on that side of the ball. And I know you're with Coach Hagan a lot, but uh, just being on the practice field with, you know, Coach Hagan, Coach Ash, Coach Valai, Coach Hutzler, what have those new coaches brought to the table just in terms of, I don't know if it's energy or juice every day, what kind of dynamic have those new coaches brought that that's made practice different or just day-to-day -day different for you guys? Honestly, uh the whole group of new coaches, uh, I was, of course, like, you know, change, change is hard, especially when you, you've been used to something for years. And for them to come in and have the impact that they've had on us and how much fun that we have out there, I felt like 
bring the energy and the juice or whatever you want to call it every single day. And as players, we feed off of that. And we just kidding. We continue to get better. We continue to grow. We continue to get tighter as a defense. And these coaches definitely did come in and do that for us and help us with this process. So I feel like they bring the juice every day. They bring the energy. They bring knowledge. They're, they're great coaches, great teachers. So I'm glad that they came. Danny, what do you have? Um, DQ, kind of going off what Jeff was asking a couple minutes ago about um, new coaches, how is the relationship between what you've seen Coach Hagan and Coach Giles been? And how was that working with all you guys having two, I know they coach kind of different guys, but having two guys coaching the defensive line? Um, at first, uh, I guess it was pretty weird, you know, me always being used to being with Coach Giles, but we adjusted pretty fast and I don't know, everything, everything pretty much seems normal. I built a relationship with Coach Hagan and I don't know, it's like I kind of don't know any like different anymore. We just continue to grind it out and work and build our relationship. Mario, did you have a question? Yes. Hi, Taquan. Um, so y'all are expected to play for now, but if the season did get canceled, how do you feel like that would impact you mentally and emotionally? Oh, um, I really haven't thought about that, honestly. Um, we're supposed to play, what, to September 12th or whenever it is. So I get, I'm just done working towards that, working towards the UTEP game and continuing, continuing practice with my teammates, and we're just going to keep pushing and grinding it out. Chip, go ahead. TQ, how would you describe Coach Hagan and his, you know, his personality, his style of coaching, and and how do you keep 118 to 22 year old guys from going out to parties and doing what, you know, college students do over a five month span? Um. Speaking about Coach Hagan, um, great coach, great coach. He's, uh, I would say he's very detailed and he has high expectations of us. And he pushes us on the daily. He pushes us the whole time during practice. And I feel like over this little period of time that he had, he's made us so much better. And he just, I guess he expand. He also like teaches in the film room. He's, He's very particular in how he wants stuff done. And I just feel like he's a great and amazing coach and he's a great guy as well. But when it comes to, you know, trying to control, you know, a whole bunch of young guys from not going out and partying, it's been emphasized over and over again by all our coaches, our leaders on the team, that we, the most disciplined team during the season will win and the most disciplined team We'll have, you know, take care of ourselves and not do stupid things and to wear a mask public and do all the right things that we should be doing to make sure not only that we be safe, but also that we can play. Jeff, you're up. And TQ, you've, uh, you know, in games you've gone against offensive linemen that have been, you know, all Americans and high draft picks. And, and a lot of that stuff is, is being said about Sam Cosme this preseason. You've faced Sam a lot in practice in your three years, what what do you think makes Sam, uh, one, such a good player, but two, worthy of that kind of praise of being, you know, an All-American type guy or a potential high draft pick? Um, coming in, coming in together, you know, as freshman, he earned it. He earned it. He earned it with his play. He earned it with his work. Uh, lifting weights together, he's earned it day in and day out. And I think something that makes him really – like special, something that makes him the player he is. Number one, he loves competing, always competes day in and day out. If I squatted 600 pounds this day, he's put a two and a half, two two and a halfs on, and he's going to squat 605. Like, that's just the type of competitor he is. And something, the other thing that makes him special is his athleticism. He's one of the most athletic offensive linemen I've seen ever. Definitely number one on my list. Go ahead, Danny. Uh, Tiki, why did you feel comfortable playing this season? 
Well, if it was going to be a season, I was going to play in it because this is my senior year, and I want to play with the guys I came in with, and I want to play like he, the team, want to play, and I want to be a part of that. I want to play. I want to play with the guys. There's, there's no way I could, I could sit at home and watch, you know, Texas Longhorns play and me not be a part of that. Dennis, go ahead. I, I don't know if you had a chance to think about this, but is there any scenario that could unfold, whether the season's shortened or in the spring, where you either play in the spring or would come back for another senior year? Um, I haven't really thought about that at all. Uh, I guess that's in the back of everyone's mind, but honestly, right now, I'm just taking it day by day, you know, practicing, uh, lifting weights, you know, doing everything I would do to prepare for a season because as the schedule says, we have a game coming up pretty soon in about two weeks. Chip, go ahead. TQ, I want to ask you about some of the – the young guys that you're you're going up against, what what has stood out about Isaiah Hookfin, and what's stood out about Jake Majors? Um, uh, starting with Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, he's a even even when he came in as a, you know like a true freshman. He's always like he was strong, big strong guy. He was working out with us, and I just noticed that, like you know, straight off, he was a big strong guy. And going against him in practice, he's physical, he's strong, he's smart, and he has all the tools to be a great player. And with Jake, uh, I haven't gone against Jake that much in practice, but Jake seems like he's going to develop into a great player. You know, sometimes in his past, he looks like Shaq. You know. Chris, go ahead. You got a question? Yeah. Uh, Taquan, you said you have that September 12th date with UTEP, and that's what you're working toward. You finally have a goal. How big of a relief was it when the Big 12 came out and said, we're sticking with football, here's the schedule, and they did all of that? And what was it like before then when you're seeing the Big 10's calling it, the Pac-12 is calling it, these other conferences are saying, we're not doing it. What What was it like having that uncertainty, thinking that it might not happen, and then – knowing you've got a target and a goal you're working toward in, in September 12th in UTEP. That's, that's, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, personally for me, um, I'm always pretty like goal oriented. And so always looking ahead, always looking to the next thing. And I guess when, you know, certain conferences were falling out, they were getting canceled. I wasn't, wasn't too worried about it. Big 12 didn't come out with anything and say anything. So whatever that was scheduled for the day or planned for the day as a team, focus on the team stuff. Yeah, I try not to focus on things that I can't control. There's so many unknowns at this point in time in this world. There's so many uncontrollables. All I can worry about is what I can control. And what I can control is coming in every day, working with my team, trying to be a leader and continuing to grind and get better as a player. Got time for one last one. Go ahead, Chip. TQ, what, uh, what have you seen from Tavondre Sweat? And, and do you think Collins and, and Broughton can, can help you all this year? Um, talking about T. Sweat, man, T. Sweat, my little brother, and – I, I love him to death and seeing him seeing him work this summer and turn to a player turn to a player he is, I'm really excited for him and I'm excited for everyone to go out and watch him. That's all I really can say on that. And the two young guys, they definitely can help us. They're very talented. They're very explosive and they definitely can play. So I think they can help us.